Welcome again to Learning AutoCAD 2013 tutorial number 12. Today we'll go over the design center and we'll see how to modify existing blocks or remove them when you don't need it. At the same time we'll keep working on our residential project. These tutorials are being produced by EasyCAD for you and just remember, share and give a like. To access the design center we go to the view tab in the palace module and down here we have the icon for it. So let's click it. And this is a powerful tool which allows you to use content from one drawing into your current drawing. As you see, this palette is mainly divided into two sections. My left pane, here you can try to locate your file to use some elements from it into your current drawing. Whenever you see a plus sign, of course, it means that it has other elements inside, which will be available in the right pane. Now, within the actual design center, CAD includes samples that we can use for multiple disciplines. Let's use here the house designer. And we notice that it has multiple elements we can use. But I'm actually interested in using some blocks. So let's click it. Now on the right pane, see a preview of all the available blocks within the drawing. I want to use this bus stop. So let's drag and drop in our drawing or just double click it. You'll see it attached to your crosshair and all you need to do is specify where you want it. In my case, I usually place it anywhere here and later I'll position it correctly. Now we can close it and let's move our block to the right place. At this point, you should know how to do this without my instructions. If you don't know how, make sure to go back to the right tutorial. Let's go back to the Science Center for another block now. And when we open it up, it goes back to where we were before closing. So let's select this ball, I mean this sink. But I'll just click once and this block dialog box comes up. You should know how to use it since this was explained in the last tutorial. The point here is that when you double click, the default values to insert the blocks are used. But if you single click, then you have the option to modify those values before inserting the block in your drawing. Now on the bathtub, although I rotate it and place it correctly, the block is shorter than what I need for this bathroom. So now let's switch topics and move to how to modify an existing block. First step is selecting the block and right click. Now we have two options for this, but first select the block editor option. When you do this, it will take you to a place where you can modify your block exclusively. You have several options to do that, but normally you use this option if you have specific instructions for a given block. So let's say that in your project, all the bathtubs are going to change from one brand to a different one, and we have to modify the size of all the bathtubs to fit the new version. So I will draw a reference P-line at 5 inches to the right and then going down. And now we'll stretch the top until the line meets here. And of course, now erase the P-line. That could be an example of when to use the block editor. Now within this place, you can treat every object individually like lines, arcs, etc. And we will modify accordingly. If the modification is okay, we can go here to save the block changes and then you just close the block editor. Now, back on the drawing, you can notice that it in fact increased the length of the top. Still, it's not the size we need, so let's modify it again. Select the objects, right click, and now from the menu, use the Edit Block in Place option. As you can see before actually modifying it, it will give you this dialog box, so all you need to do is confirm you want to modify it. Just accept it and now see that the entire drawing fade out and only your block is normal, which means that you can modify your block based on the needs of the drawing, but you can't modify the rest of the drawing, only the block. I will do just the same we did in the block editor for the outer part of the bathtub, but we will use as a reference the existing wall. 
And of course, for the inner part of the top, I will mirror the line on the other side to get the exact distance, and we'll move the arc to meet this outer line. Now we'll raise the line, and finally, I will extend the lines of the top to meet the arc here. I'm not explaining any of this because this was already discussed in a previous video. Now get out of here, just go to the edit reference module on the ribbon, hover over it and you will see some options like discard or in my case I'll use save changes. As for clicking it, you will have a last chance to confirm what you're doing with this dial box and I'll just hit OK. And now we're back in our drawing with the modified block. Let's insert another bathtub and we'll place it right next to the first one. And I will modify the original one so you see how it reacts to the modification. Select again the bathtub, right click it, and although we can use any method, I'll use the block editor. And here in the editor, I will add anything to the drawing, to the bathtub. So let's add a couple of circles and immediately I will try to close the editor. Since we haven't saved the changes yet, now CAD will give us this dial box saying we have a final option whether to discard or save the changes. So I will save what we just did. I mean, you can see that changes also affected the other block. But we didn't modify that, right? Well, any modification you do in an existing block will affect all of them. Since I won't keep these modifications because it was done only for you to see how it worked, I'm removing all of this. So, in your case, undo what I just did. Now, let's go back to the design center to select a couple of additional blocks to complete our bathroom fixtures. Although I already have this toilet within the drawing, I'll use it from here because it's not going to duplicate it. And additionally, we will insert also this faucet to use as a complement for the sink we already have in the drawing. Now all we need to do is to put this in the right place. So I will move the toilet here. I have to rotate it also. And just remember, in case you skip some of the previous tutorials, my advice is go back to learn how to do this, like rotate or move or extend, etc. I will draw now the sink cabinet. So let's use command rectangle. Specify the first point down here next to the bathtub. Now we'll use the dimension option and we'll specify 4 feet for the width and 1 foot 10 inches for the height. All we need to do is move this square to the left and I will do it with this command using the displacement option at minus 10, 0. However, you see that the rectangle overlaps the toilet, which means that our toilet and also the window are in the wrong place. So let's move both to the right position. Again, we'll use the move command, displacement option, and we'll specify minus 13, 0. And now, we do have the right position for our window and toilet. Now, let's place the faucet in the right area. So, we'll move it using the very center point of this block from here. And we'll place it right at the middle of the top line of the rectangle. And from here, we'll mirror the faucet to look in the right direction. As you can see, I'm using FA to activate ortho mode and get a straight mirror line. And of course, let's erase the original faucet. Now our final move with this faucet is put it up 2 inches to get to the final position we need. For our final block, we go to insert tab and click on the command of the same name. And from the drop down list, select the sink. Just make sure to have this scale option checked at the midpoint on the sideline to make sure we have it at the very center area. As you see now, I have the prompt to enter the scale factor for X and Y axis. I'm using 0.85. Our next operation is moving it to the place we want. So use command move using as the base point the corner of the rectangle and now selecting the middle of this line as the second point for the displacement and finally move it again to be placed at the right position below the faucet and now let's finalize going to the view tab 
Layer Properties Manager, and here let's create a new layer to place our fixtures and furniture later on. You can use this as an exercise, so create a new layer, rename it as A-Furniture, select a color for it, I'll use blue, and now select all the subjects back in the drawing and place it on the new layer. Notice that all objects should change colors to the one of the layer, in my case, to blue. Well, friends, this is it for today. Remember, feel free to comment and give a like if you enjoy. The next video will focus on what to do to add text and dimensions to our drawing and the steps we need in order for us to be able to print what we do. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.